And it's an honor and privilege to welcome and introduce the members of this panel. V. Ranganathan Ayer, Group CIO and EVP IT, JBM. Gurpreet Singh, Managing Director, Arrow PC Network. Sanket Atal, MD Intuit India. Sachin Kumar Gorewar, Chief Robotics Officer, Griffin Robotech. Manzar Abbas, CIO Rockman, and this session will be moderated by Shobit Mathur, Director, Business Consulting, EY India. Shobit, the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ivan. Uh, it's uh, and me as it is said uh, that we live in an exponential times. Uh, what we see is that the uh, if you look at uh, the first 50 million uh, technology adopters of any technology uh, as a benchmark of how fast the technology infusion is happening what we see is the landline telephones were took 75 years to get first 50 million users uh, comparing that to mobile phone users it took 12 years Let's move on. If we look at Facebook, it took it just four years to get its first 50 million users. Now let's move forward. Pokemon Go, which was an AR-based app, took just 19 days to reach its first 50 million users. What we are seeing clearly is exponential rate at which technology infusion is happening. Now the panel is all about how we how we see our Indian uh, small and business enterprises gearing up to using this space, getting used to of this space, adapting to this space, which no longer is a matter of choice. It's just a necessity. It's just a survival need to be on this bandwagon of being on top of the emerging technologies rather than just waiting for the world to force upon them. It's my privilege uh, to have a very esteemed uh, panelist with me. I hope uh, we together can come up with certain specific pointers of what we uh, think the small and business enterprises need in India. What are some of the challenges they face with regards to keeping up with this exponential times as we see. To begin with, I would request Mr. Ranganathan uh, to just help the uh, all the participants understand from a big OEM perspective, what is JBM try doing right now to help some of their small and, uh, small and medium business vendors as part of their value chain partners to keep up with the pace of transformation. Uh, thank you, Shubhit. Uh, it is, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, if, you, if you look into the uh, value chain, uh, JBM being uh, part of uh, one of the uh, tier one suppliers to most of the OEMs, and then now we are uh, OEM uh, ourselves. Uh, uh, the main important uh, uh, fact is, uh, being a part of a value chain uh, uh, stream, we have to segregate these in two different buckets. Uh, one which is on the upstream where uh, we are uh, serving to different OEMs. For them, uh, we are small players uh, and we have somewhere around 4,000 suppliers who are uh, uh, really SMEs who are uh, uh, working together to make uh, the value chain more meaningful. Having said that, uh, uh, in the whole context, if you look into uh, the SME segment, if you look into, uh, they are more uh, cautious about the bottom line to be very honest. That's number one. Number two, uh, they are more cost conscious because uh, they are very small in uh, uh, nature. Uh, there are certain exemptions where uh, some of the SMEs are really tech savvy. Uh, but still, uh, out of 4,000 suppliers who are working with us, uh, uh, more than 85% uh, they are reluctant to put on uh, the digital 
road map for them. Uh, being a, uh, because uh, in the auto sector, if you look into the OEMs, really give hands to their uh, tier one partners to come to the next level. The same way, uh, JBM being one of the important big uh, players as far tier one is concerned, we have identified certain uh, uh, like-minded uh, people, uh, and we are trying to work along with them as a part of our uh, value chain and then we are ensuring that they are uh, adapting uh, digital uh, practices. We are uh, giving some uh, examples or you can say case studies for them to start with uh, uh, so that they are also coming on to the uh, digital platform in the next three to five years. It will be very difficult for them uh, to start with because uh, the management is uh, directly involved and they are always uh, uh, correlating the business uh, which they are getting from uh, uh, the customers. They relate how quick they are getting the money back, number one. Number two, how they are in a position to bring in more value addition uh, uh, into the bottom line. So these are all the two categories we are also focusing so that uh, we can increase that 50% to 1-5% to 20% of the SMEs are uh, coming into the bandwagon so that uh, uh, we are also uh, performing uh, and giving more to the customers who are always on the, on the, on the demand, uh, a demanding position to get uh, from our uh, whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think very well said. So ultimately, it is the competitiveness of the whole value chain which drives and gives, uh, gives uh, you know, value and competitiveness uh, at the end of the day for the complete, uh, you know, uh, the value chain is important uh, for everybody in the, in the whole, uh, you know, ecosystem. So uh, I'll move on to uh, Mr. Gurpreet and uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the key problems that I have, uh, uh, you know, I have seen a lot of uh, especially the small and medium businesses have is to just navigate through this whole maze of different terms that keeps getting dropped at us. Uh, you know, and, and, and the list just keeps, seems to be ever growing. Um, and, uh, every six months we see something new coming. So, uh, in your experience, uh, you know, what are, uh, what are some of the key things that these, uh, small businesses, uh, should do, uh, to just better understand and sort of navigate their way through this whole maze of terms? Uh, so that they are better informed and, and take the right call, as Mr. Ranganathan was also saying, ultimately it should add to the bottom line. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I am privileged to be part of this uh, elite panel and uh, it's proud to be part of this particular discussion where we are talking about how SMBs can uh, take up and uh, cope up with the new challenges which are coming up. Uh, what we have seen in our experience is that uh, SMBs are definitely reluctant when it comes to a change and this uh, COVID has actually, you see, uh, make them realize that there is a sudden change. Whatever adaptability was going to be there in few years, now that particular adaption is coming into maybe months or maybe sometimes in few weeks they have to adapt the new technologies and accordingly work so that they can uh, cope up with the challenges which are there. As uh, Mr. Ayer was mentioning, almost 85% of their vendors or their service providers are, you see, not having that kind of resources or sometimes that kind of mindset which is uh, there uh, so that they can adapt to the new technology. And uh, as, as you mentioned, Shobit, this is definitely a challenge because every time you see Companies keep on coming with different products, different kind of solutions and gimmicks are there and uh, SMEs get a little bit of confusion that what to buy and what not to buy. I believe the best way is to have the references. Uh, I believe uh, that's the most important and the most competent way of adapt adaption when it is happening. Uh, most of the times what they are looking at it that how exactly their peers or maybe the companies on their upline or uh, the uh, people who actually they can relate to for their businesses are doing. And they can not exactly cut, copy, paste that, but accordingly take their decisions. So, for example, if a company like uh, Mr. IS company, JBM is doing something, they can actually look at 
that how exactly their vendors, their service providers can take few of the methodologies out of it and accordingly uh, go ahead with their personal challenges. There is a lot of customization which is required in doing all such things. And that is where the partners like ROPC Network come close to the customers, discuss with them their pain point, their challenges, their budgets, their actual needs, and start providing them the services. So my point is that they should not just go with the wave, whatever everybody is doing or whatever the different OEMs or the suppliers are advertising, but they should actually sit back, look at the best of the case studies, look at how exactly those case studies or those particular implementations and deployments have helped their peers and accordingly take their decisions. That's the most important thing. But ultimately, they have to be ready for the change. They have to embrace the change. If they keep reluctant or if they, you see, still keep on the thinking mode that karna hai, nahi karna hai kind of, then it will be very difficult. They have to actually jump in, take the challenge heads on, look at the solutions which are available, look at the case studies, take decisions and go ahead. That's our suggestions to the SMBs. Uh, um, very well said, uh, Mr. Uh, Gurpreet. I think uh, it's very important to understand that uh, one size uh, fits all approach uh, is definitely not the way to go, uh, especially for uh, SMBs where they really need to understand and pinpoint the needs because they it's just uh, they, the the capacity to keep uh, um, uh, keep investing is it, and course correcting is also not that much so i think they need to be careful where they are putting their money and get the right solution which meets their need um, now while uh, the technology has evolved uh, one of the things that has newly entered the whole space is saas uh, so software as a service uh, where uh, india particularly has been uh, uh, has been really doing really really well because of the uh, strong IT ecosystem which existed. And uh, the technology has enabled uh, Indian SaaS providers to actually go global a lot faster than our conventional industries. So would request Mr. Sanket if he can throw some light on uh, how the Indian SaaS SMBs are doing and you know how are they sort of enabling a transformation uh, for the industrial ecosystem? Of course, Shobhita, thank you so much. First of all, I'd just like to briefly introduce what Intuit does. Uh, so Intuit is a fintech company uh, based out of the United States, and the primary products are QuickBooks, TurboTax, and Mint. QuickBooks is an accounting product, number one in its category with SMBs. TurboTax is an individual tax filing product, very, very popular, and Mint is a personal wealth management product. All of them are SaaS products. And uh, so, you know, we live in an amazing time today. Uh, in this uh, particular era, uh, I call the three T's. The three T's are the great enablers for innovation. Uh, the first T is technology. Now, as we all know, uh, the uh, e even a couple of decades ago, for, if you were to try to establish a company, the costs would be astronomical. You would need to figure out where to host your product, how to provide it to the end users, etc. cetera. Um, how do you actually do IT for your company? But as Mr. Gurpi pointed out, there are so many products available today in the market as SaaS that you'd be able to get in and uh, leverage those towards uh, powering not just your internal IT, but also powering your uh, the, the product that you're creating. And uh, what I like to say is that uh, uh, the great enabler for that has been another three-letter acronym that's very popular in India, um, which allows us to... Uh, 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 make uh, timely payments on a monthly basis to avail amazing benefits, right? Um, the other T is talent. Now, uh, all over the world, and especially in India, we have an abundance of talent, and people are getting more and more adventurous to join smaller companies to try to develop amazing technologies. And, you know, the availability of a plethora of uh, courses enables them to actually uh, enter any field and to be able to do amazing things. Even within computer science, all of the areas are available. So talent is abundantly available. And finally, the target market. And the target market being, we have all the technologies and all the data available uh, through various companies and on the web, where if you'd like to be sitting in India and target a market outside, uh, you're able to do that. In fact, very precisely, you could target a particular suburb of a city in the United States. 
Now, I mentioned these three Ts because they are enabling the Indian SaaS companies to do amazing things, right? First of all, with SaaS um, and using the technology leverage, you're able to create products. Now, your product could be an end product as in an end application, or it could be a service that's leveraged by other companies. Uh, but you're able to uh, create it and provide it to all the consumers in the world that you would like. Uh, if you're a company that's producing an, uh, an actual end application, the market in India itself is tremendously huge. Now, here is where, you know, I would like to expand our definition of SMBs. So when we were talking about SMBs earlier, uh, like Mr. Gurpi and Mr. Ranganathan were talking about, we were talking about slightly larger entities. But India is about scale. So we have like 75 million businesses plus in India, and a whole bunch of them are much, much smaller entities. Now, take the case of your Panwala. A Panwala is a small business vendor as well, correct? Uh, and the Panwala can also leverage technologies to do amazing things. Now, if you tell a Panwala that uh, you would like to, you know, you would like to have them have an accounting system in their shop, they are going to laugh at you. But if you take a look at it today, the internet is ubiquitous, and you have the availability of fairly decent computing power uh, uh, at your fingertips in the form of smartphones or even pads. So a Panwala could easily access. Uh, you know, SaaS products to be able to do their accounting while not actually changing the topography of their particular shop. Uh, and a great example of this is, uh, I think, you know, um, about a few years ago uh, when the uh, demonetization happened, all of a sudden there was a big wave towards Paytm and other, uh, uh, you know, digital payment products. And uh, what people thought would take forever happened overnight. And now any place you go to, you're able to use the QR code and make payments. Now that is adoption of technology by SMBs. And we do need to really appreciate that. And it's a big wave coming. And if you truly appreciate that particular segment as well, then any company in India that's coming up with interesting products has a humongous market uh, to leverage. And Shobit, if I may, I'll just give you a couple of examples of what Intuit has done in the United States to help its uh, SMBs who are using the SaaS products. Now, during the pandemic, there was a lot of hardships for small businesses. A lot of small businesses shut down and uh, various initiatives were created by the uh, US government to help these uh, businesses. So uh, for Intuit customers, um, Intuit helped them, you know, wade through the, you know, quagmire of all of these forms you need to fill out to uh, sign up for, say, a pay paycheck protection program. So because all the data was in there, we were able to guide them to be able to do this very quickly and that saved their businesses, right? Another example of an amazing technology which people are leveraging, especially now, is something we call the virtual expert platform. So whether it's our QuickBooks product or it's our TurboTax product, we have a version of them which is called Live. And what does Live mean? So say uh, an SMB is uh, using QuickBooks for its accounting and they need to talk to a chartered accountant. Um, what you'd ideally like to be able to talk to a chartered accountant, especially in these times, remotely, but have the right kind of security for all of your documents, etc. So the virtual expert platform enables that, and our live products connect you with an actual live uh, you know, consultant for the particular field, and you can, through amazing security and real-time access, you're able to get your questions answered. Now, this is an example of technology coming to the aid of small businesses in times like this. And one last thing here uh, as a part of this is that our entire approach to what we do is not take a look at technology and try to figure out how to use it, but rather take a look at the needs of our customers and figure out how to solve them with technology. And by being customer uh, centric and obsessed with customers, uh, solving customers problems, we're able to address this thing. So SaaS in this day and age, absolutely fantastic time show. So thank you. I think uh, great uh, examples on how uh, SMBs uh, can leverage uh, the current technologies. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I mean, it's not about investing. Maybe it's also about saving, uh, uh, saving some of their cost uh, leveraging technology. So I think some of the great examples, Mr. Sanke, thank you so much. Uh, so I'll uh, request Mr. Abbas to again give a perspective from a, uh, from a, a large enterprise uh, again working with uh, a lot of uh, small and medium businesses uh, how important is it uh, from the own business objective perspective for an oem uh, to have a digitally uh, savvy uh, digitally enabled uh, vendor how important it is uh, for your own business objectives mr apas 
Thank you so much, Shobit. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I would like to take from where uh, Mr. Ranganathan has actually left. That, you know, it's about SMBs and SMB, but especially the small businesses. They look at the, you know, bottom line first and it's turn around how fast they're going to turn it around. And that's how it dictates the technology adoption. But yes, in the current pandemic situation, how they have adopted so quickly, like, uh, you know, uh, example was given on the adoption of landline and adoption of mobile phones, etc. So we have seen exponential adoption of technology within days that how, you know, people are actually adopting and leveraging technology. You know, Rockman is the large enterprise. We are into automotive component manufacturing and the largest, one of the largest, uh, you know, uh, alloy wheel manufacturer. It actually puts, it in, puts us into a very unique position wherein we are working and supplying to the largest of the OEMs in India and, and globally as well. And we are working with a vendor base, which is actually either some of them are very large global suppliers, like we are doing aluminum. So we are importing aluminum, we are buying aluminum. And there are there is a lot of SMBs that are actually adding to our value chain. What happens is when you do the technology adoption and you want others to adopt in your ecosystem, for a company like us, we need to have a big, uh, big brotherly handholding kind of attitude. When we create an ecosystem, we uh, you know dissipate the knowledge. We ask them to join it. So you know what we are doing is that we are doing you know uh, from shop floor we are we are trying to do all the connected cyber physical systems. We want our SMBs to you know vendors to actually take part in e bidding platforms. We uh, want our MSMEs to be, you know, collaborating and you know, taking part through discount aggregators like M1 Exchange or a marketplace like Moglix. So, and, and with this, uh, I'm sure that Mr. Ranganathan will agree to it that this BS6 traceability uh, clauses coming in, the compliance is coming by the government. It has become more and more important because as a manufacturer, we manufacture a lot of uh, safety, you know, uh, uh, critical parts like wheels, like brakes. So those things, uh, you know, we also take uh, manufacture and we also take uh, BOPs that it that is uh, bought out parts. Now, the compliance actually calls for the backward traceability. It calls for the traceability of when the process, what were the parameters of the process when this was produced. Now, I buy something from my supplier and put it into uh, some component and then further supply it to my OEM after manufacturing my component. So, you know, ultimately with the vehicle index number, we have to be able to trace it to the, till the last mile from where it has been generated. So that traceability cannot happen without technology adoption at all. You cannot have that, you know, ecosystem built in without that. And then we are actually, you know, uh, we want to do integration of applications with our suppliers. We want to do the account reconciliation with APIs. And also, so we run MRP, and bombs are getting so, so those kind of things like you know digital POs and the acknowledgement of PO coming in is a very basic expectation of a company like us with our SMBs. Many of them has come forward and complied to it, and to many of them we have helped and handled to come come to the fore. So I think uh, yeah, this is what is required is handholding and you know exchange of knowledge dissipation of knowledge and, you know, collaboration with the ecosystem. No, I mean, very well said, uh, Mr. Abbas. It's very true that, you know, as they say, data is the new uh, asset. I mean, and unless uh, the uh, unless there is a full uh, uh, and, and, and uh, transparent flow of information uh, helps everyone uh, improve the efficiency and something which uh, uh, which is being um, uh, the focus uh, internationally across uh, all sectors so uh, you know very very uh, very very important i think uh, in all the sectors in india also that we move towards a more integrated uh, technology backbone across the value chain uh, certainly uh, thank you so much mr abbas so i'll uh, request uh, mr sachin as a as someone who who is a provider of uh, you know technology uh, to smbs to just uh, help understand um, you know make our participant understand as to 
what are some of the uh, some of the elements and important considerations that uh, the small and medium businesses uh, should have before we actually uh, take the buying decision i mean for them obviously an investment uh, in, into emerging technology is a long term uh, and something which which they can't as we discussed earlier they can't reverse uh, very yeah. uh, quick, you know and and it's not easy for them to take that plunge especially if they are entering into an unknown territory so right what what are those key considerations according to you uh, they should have before they take the final decision yeah uh, thanks so with hi everyone uh, i hope i am audible today you are certainly yeah <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, it's a very very important questions and i think all of us uh, should be discuss- discussing on this because this is the current need right now because uh, the smes uh, many times uh, they end up taking a wrong decision on a technology so i think the most important factor over here is identifying the right problem statement is going to be a key for the new technology implementation i'll just give an example like this pandemic has uh, almost brought the manufacturing uh, industry to a standstill position where most of the things will depend on the resource manpower who are operating the machines right but if you see like if an sme want to implement an automation they have to just dig down a little bit for example there are two types of manpower one is skilled and another is unskilled so you get many people to do the unskilled job but whatever is the skilled factor into it for example painting is there welding is there i think mr ranganathan and mr abbas may be knowing it very well so these are all skilled job which cannot be uh, like when the person changes it is like person dependent so i think it is very important to take a decision to identify this type of bottlenecks which are uh, which are like affecting the quality productivity of the uh, components that need to be identified and automated at the first instant and uh, yeah it's like uh, that is the thing also identifying the oems should help the uh, smbs to identify the technology because smbs are not much aware of what is exactly going on into the world right so uh, oem should hand hold them to a right direction and identify the problem guide them support them in terms of capital like uh, capital is also very important for them because it is like a huge investment on their end so i agree with mr sanket like saas is very popular in india and soon i think uh, robotic as a services is also becoming popular so robotic as a services is becoming popular in the western countries and europe and i think soon it will come to india so i think these are the things which will help to take a decision on implementing a new technologies uh thank you uh, thank you mr sachin i think the uh, the point that you mentioned about actually first let's identify the problem uh, yeah. what you are trying to solve is definitely uh, you know something which should be at the heart of all the decisions um, and and better the clarity is on that um, answer better uh, is the decision going to be uh, yeah. so i'll uh, i'll request mr ranganathan uh, to you know uh, again um in your experience uh, you know we have talked about uh, so far about the need and the drivers and you know why the uh, smes need to become digitally uh, you know sort of more savvy but in your experience do you see a, a trend uh, which is uh, uh, more positive towards it or do you think uh, covid and all the liquidity shock uh, that came uh, with it has actually uh, slowed uh the the attitude of uh, you know the uh, the the proprietors and the attitude of the business owners to invest into something which uh, we all would agree has some kind of risk uh in terms of you know investing in an emerging technology so uh, what is what is your experience been on this uh thanks for it again uh, there are three elements into that uh, number one if you improve their quality the quality of the produce if it is getting increased it means uh, they are saving money number 2 if you are in a position to convince the smes that how asset utilization can get increased we should not talk about uh, mentioning uh, invest this much if you are going to uh, increase your machine utilization by delta percentage 
what is possible with the use case when we take for example what we do we take a case that when we are deploying this technology for example for quality visual paste quality should be done number one elimination of manpower number two if you are going to detect 40 kinds of uh, 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 quality checks uh, human may miss one or two system cannot miss it will check all 40 and if any rejection if it is there it will reject so quality if you are improving by deploying this you will be in a position to save this many uh, uh, time as well you can give a right quality to the customer that's number one number two the machine utilization time for example with the same machine you can produce uh, seven percent or eight percent of uh, uh, your manufacturing cost goes down so when we are trying to give explain and give some use cases on these lines the adaption is much quicker faster they are ready to invest it all depends uh, as uh, uh, mr sachin told if you are identifying and then telling the smbs the right thing they will take it quickly and uh, we have felt uh, the approach was an issue earlier it is getting corrected that is my point of view yeah no definitely i think um, uh, as they say uh, covid uh, is the biggest driver for this tra digital transformation uh, sort of the silver lining to the dark clouds that all of us faced uh, but certainly yeah, i mean the i think the the attitude uh, is changing i think uh, the smbs are becoming little bit more uh, uh, you know aware of the fact that uh, these technologies are there to help them rather than threat their business model uh, so mr gurpreet uh, you know we uh, earlier we talked about how customization is important uh, for any uh, solution for an smb to bring him uh, the best uh, roi so uh, in in your uh, experience can you please uh, give a few examples of you know how customization uh, and and a more tailored approach can really help an SM, smb rather than a off the shelf product implementation yeah sure with first of all uh, you see business is all about uh, what results can you get with the available resources smbs as all of us are mentioning are having very limited resources and they have to actually ensure that what best results they can bring out of the available resources. Second thing is business is all about the right decisions taken at right time. So these things are actually which ensure that yes, we are able to grow in our businesses and we are able to uh, sustain our businesses. Most important thing which we are discussing today is either we are taking uh, talking about SaaS or we are talking about robotics as a service. Uh, with our principal company Dell Technologies, Aero PC network, what we have started is we are providing everything as a service. We are having a project, we are calling it Project Apex, in which we are providing everything as a service. Either we talk about infrastructure as a service or we talk about platform as a service, software as a service. We are providing complete implementation as a service we are providing to our customers. And you see, as we were talking, if we are doing this in the phases and they can actually utilize the uh, resources as they grow. That is the best thing. We have several examples where we have done that with our customers. Our team actually go back, sit with the customer, understand their challenges, come up with a particular solution, and then they see that how exactly this particular solution should be implemented in the manner that they are utilizing their resources in the best available manner, and they are the desired results for a customer that is Bikaner Wala, uh, which is a known name, known brand in the industry today. They were having all these uh, the things, videos, and all those things of what? Uh, can somebody confirm if I am audible? Uh, Show me I'm yes. audible. Yeah, you are. There was a little bit of connectivity issue, I think. So we lost your video for a few seconds, but uh, it appears fine now. So please continue. Sir. Thank you. So they were having these challenges that digital technology is coming up. All Swiggy, Zomato's and all other delivery issues are 
delivery solutions are rather there and they have to you see opt all those things so we were sitting with them understanding from their finance department also from their user department also from their marketing department also we have to actually not sit only with the it guys but we have to sit with the different different departments understand their individual challenges and accordingly you see create a solution sitting with the it guys and then see that how exactly the solution has to be implemented in the manner that cfo is also happy cmo is also happy cio is definitely happy and ceo also gets the desired results so if we are actually able to manage such things that's how you see we can we can also <laughs> you see remain in the business unless we are providing such services and such solutions to our customers they will not see even us as a relevant partner to them so these partnerships can actually bring a lot of business sense to them either it is utilizing your data or it is having services as and when required or it is growing your business according to the resources available to you we have worked with the university also that's again a very very you see good case where they have almost 20000 uh, students they have 1200 uh, uh, alumni there are several uh, people in the different different departments then there are professors and everybody has to reach and you see utilize this technology which we have provided to them and ensure that yes they are getting the desired results now sitting with it ensuring that whatever we are implementing is implementing getting implemented it within time is as per their desire and is not actually you see uh, creating issue on their available resources either it is money or people or everything they have everything in you see a limited manner so understanding those things from the customers and then implementing according to that is we keep on doing and the best thing is you see in this pandemic times customers were so much into all these things they were sitting with us talking about what work from home solutions can we give to them what is the security we can provide to them when they are talking about byod what is the solution we can provide to them for their data center modernization piece automation piece either it is multi cloud strategy so there are several things and the best thing about when we are acting as a it partner is that once we are talking to mr ranganatha here and talking about the business of automobile then we are sitting in another customer talking about the retail somebody else we are talking about a different business and accumulating all these experiences you see it, it becomes a real good experience also we also feel this yes we are actually doing something for our customers we are acting as savior of their businesses so we also feel proud of that but yes in the nutshell providing customized solution to the smbs making sure that yes they are getting better results of their available resources is the key and that's how a partner like aero pc network and a company like dell technologies or any other oem can survive in the market that thank you uh, thanks mr gurpreet yeah definitely i mean how you bring uh, 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 different parts of the business together uh, and solve all their problems uh, with the solution is very important rather than focusing on uh, a few sort of siloed uh, approach is definitely not the way to go uh, now you brought about a very one second show me earlier earlier the methodology was that we will sell what we have now that cannot work we yeah. have to what customer need we have to you see create accordingly to the customer need and then only we will be able to do no i think so very very valid point, point sir yeah so uh, you also raised a very uh, good point about you know how you leverage uh, uh, a huge uh, uh, asset which uh, some of the academic institutions have with regards to students and faculty and that brings uh, a very important point around uh, uh uh what's new in town is around uh, you know more open crowd sourcing of ideas crowd sourcing of innovation and we have been uh, hearing a lot about crowd sourcing of funds crowd sourcing of almost everything so uh, uh you know uh, mr sanket uh, uh i think it would be great if you can throw some light on how this open innovation and you know how these uh, communities uh, uh, are sort of working towards solving some of the big business problems uh, and uh, the approach uh, can certainly help uh, 
the small and medium businesses a lot more than large enterprises because they can afford to have their own r and d units uh, but uh, the small and business um, and medium businesses definitely are constrained to do that so how do you think is this whole crowdsourcing of innovation helping uh, smbs or have potential to help smbs uh, absolutely by the way um uh gurpreet ji i love the everything as a service uh, term that's uh, awesome thank you for, for introducing that um so you know uh, open innovation has the, has the potential to widen uh, the space for value creation and uh, collaboration has always been fruitful by the way it benefits not just uh, the small businesses it benefits the large corporates as well right um you know larger corporates and mnc's who collaborate with smbs must play a role in enabling their digital transformation journey similar to what mr abbas was mentioning earlier uh, you know with uh, some of the customers so we at intuit we believe in tapping into and sharing knowledge back to the open source community to solve our customers most pressing uh, financial problems because we we are a fintech company so i'll give you an example um, we have a virtual community called intuit circles intuit circles is about creating a, a virtual community for startups and there are two aspects to this you know uh, being a startup owner is actually a very lonely place to be right uh, because you know who do you go to for help how do you reach out uh, is it always for money how about technology um, you are trying to pay the bills from a day to day basis how do you go about doing that but creating a community is something that allows startups to leverage each other's best practices maybe connect with each other perhaps even merge with each other or leverage each other's technologies to do amazing things and before we started that we did research quite a bit of course in india but we went to australia we went to singapore to take a look at what exists there and this was kind of a a, a blue ocean that needed to be addressed and so we started this virtual community called intuit circles the other key part of this and this is what i was telling you about the whole technology availability part where there are so many companies who would like to become fintech companies now becoming a fintech company from scratch is a formidable task it will take you years and years to be able to establish the foundational technology on top of which you build your application but what we have at into it is we have an api layer that's available on top of our core engine that powers our quickbooks and uh, and it's available to everybody so you can actually leverage that api engine and create your applications either as a stand alone application or you can create an application that can go into our app store and all of a sudden with this integration you have the uh, ability to potentially address millions and millions of customers who are quickbooks customers now just think of the potential of that and you know our product is global we have customers globally in the you know tens of millions and uh, if a startup what's the biggest goal for a startup is to earn the first dollar and how do you earn the first dollar by having the first customer so being able to open that up and then leaving up to the startups to leverage their Uh, expertise and create amazing solutions and the reason i said it's a win win situation on both sides is because the large corporates cannot imagine all of the applications right in fact a lot of the startups have much much more imaginative much more innovative ideas so enable them and great synergy happens and that's the whole purpose behind open innovation it's something that we truly embrace and it's something that i think more and more companies today are embracing yeah i mean certainly i think that is the the power of coming together and you know being uh, um collective towards you know putting all uh, all whatever we have together to solve some of the pertinent problems uh, you know both for business purposes but as well as uh, you know some of the pressing needs of uh, what we as as human race feels in terms of uh, 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 sustainability so i'll uh, i'll uh, move on to mr abbas and you know last time we were discussing about uh, how data flow becomes so critical uh, across the value chain so would really uh, request if you can throw some light on how is these being enabled uh, especially in your organization and again some of the learnings of how other smbs can uh, and oems can uh, can take from this uh, going forward thanks shobit for asking a very relevant question at the of the hour so uh, before i start i would like to thank uh, my co panelist uh, mr gurpreet and mr sanket for their reassuring word from the service provider community and we are really you know grateful and we always see uh, service provider as partner in our businesses 
Now, uh, Shobit, you said uh, about the value chain. So let's first, uh, you know, the term itself defines that it is a chain which is which should be unbreakable and it is creating some value for you. Now, let's talk about end to end of this value chain. So we talk about uh, the shared uh, you know, resources or the infra that is management, finance, legal, etc. Et then the technology piece comes in, in uh, human resources procurement. Then on top of it, your inbound for a company like mine, inbound logistics, outbound logistics, in between the operation and manufacturing, marketing and sales services, everything sits upon that, right? So this is a chain. Now, and you also have when we talk about inbound logistics and outbound logistics, so we are talking essentially about your suppliers from whom you are procuring and outbound means you know on the way, and the end point is your customer. So. Uh, See, as of now, when we say it's a chain, then it has to be integrated and it has to be sharing seamless data with each other to take decisions. There has to be some key pointers which says that fine, when I reach here, I'm 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 good, I'm not good kind of thing. So as of now, in an organization like mine and many other organizations, ERP is still the central piece. You know, so on, around ERP, you have the rest of the world, but it's soon going to change. I will talk about the change a little later, but let's talk about the you know setup as of now in hand. So the key driver in my industry are operations and sales. The demands are getting generated via you know MRP, AOP. Then you that is, to derivative of that would be man cup manpower skill set. Then you will have the RM raw material. Then you will have a demand of tool. Then you will have a demand of this thing. So, market intelligence still the supplier base. You know the inventory. So these things has to be seamlessly connected. So like how we are doing? Uh, it, it, it it's a very relevant question that how we are doing it now for human resources. Uh, we have adopted a, a cloud based uh, you know uh, pioneer in uh, HRMS system. Which is giving me a lot of analytical uh, insights into the data. Now, based on my uh, you know requirement generated from the shop floor, that this is my production planning. I know what I'm going to produce, what kind of skill set I would need, and then you know, uh, as I said in my you know previous uh, uh, talk, that you know uh, my machines are uh, generating data. So, machine data production operator. Things are getting linked, and that comes your PMS, that is performance management system, right? So your T and I training need identification based on what you have at hand and what you're going to do as is versus the goal, and in between is the training. So now, now we are also doing uh, a lot of uh, automation on vision inspection, automated, uh, automated, you know, a poke yoke kind of thing, energy management. So. Now, my energy management system is IoT based in uh, two or three of my factories. It is giving me a lot of potential to save. So what is happening? It's, it's actually working on the, the machines and the meters are throwing data. And it's actually going to the analytical platform, which is working on a machine learning platform. Now, this data is actually linked to my planning of my shop floor capacity utilization. Which machine should I switch on? Which machine should I? So I'm saving on that. I'm saving on let's say my next approach is saving on my LPG because that is a huge spend for me. You know, my furnaces actually burn LPG to burn, you know, melt the uh, uh, aluminum. Vendor ratings. So when we see all these things, so vendor rating wherein the vendor qualifies as a direct online vendor or non doll vendor, you know, so the linking between tools, gauges, tool life enhancement. So all this thing data is flowing seamlessly because now as of now ERP is the central piece. I also have let's say order portal which is a web based portal for my aftermarket division where the distributors are actually placing their uh, uh, requirements and the orders it is getting integrated into ERP. So again the ERP is a central force and then the fulfillment happened from there. But going forward as we see in the IT industry as the, as a driver of uh, you know strategies we see that very soon a time is going to come. It's not a matter of years or you know it may be a few quarters that the you know AI based application which is actually taking your decisions through the predictive analytics is going to sit on your centerpiece and ERP actually shifts somewhere. 
on the side it's it's it can never be sidelined but yes it shifts and the central piece the decision making piece is uh, you know ai based so that is what we see uh, and uh, you know that is what is going to bring the productivity chobit yeah no certainly and i think uh, um uh, yes erp is, is something which has helped the industry a lot in the past by integrating a lot of uh, systems together uh, but yeah i mean ai is something which was considered almost a figment of imagination a few years ago but now every day whether we look at uh, alexa or siri or google home whatever any one of us use is all ai based so something which is now part of our everyday life um so mr sachin um, uh, as, as uh, one of the last questions for the panel is that uh, he as an smp what do you think are the prerequisites so if i am something someone who is starting shobit hi shobit we are well over time so yeah. you need to wind up in the next couple of minutes sure sure so uh, uh, the i think this is the last question so yeah. i think what do you uh, think is the prerequisite for a small and medium business to uh, to get on to this whole uh, digital transformation yeah i think uh, the most important prerequisite is the mindset or a mental barrier of a sms because they are scared of the technologies and i think that is one of the biggest prerequisite they have to make up their minds to implement the technologies and i think i believe like where there is a will there is a way and i think this is going to solve the problem the next uh, next prerequisite is most of the time what happens like implementation is very easy but sustenance uh, has just become a pain for them because of lack of knowledge lack of training so i think they should also have enough manpower or a staff which is trained on the technology who can at least uh, means we require someone to tame the technology so it will serve the purpose like for example the technology has been implemented for getting the quality and productivity so if we are not able to run the system we have we are completely lost so i think that is more important so i think uh, awareness about the robotics or automation uh, is definitely going to help uh the sms to be- to break their mental barriers um uh, uh thank you so much